Great. Right, morning folks, we're at Cumberland this morning, which is KwaZulu Natal in South Africa. It's um, about two hours inland from the International Airport. It's a beautiful reserve. And this morning we're doing a landscape painting of what you can see out here, uh, looking specifically at how we go from blue into distant mountain with some uh, rock feature and then into that, that area there where you can see is the um, foreground grass. And uh, what's useful is to have just a little bag of, of your brushes that you can stick in the back of the truck and go for it. Uh, I got this from, from a good friend Trish Foot. If you're watching this, this is you still many years later. I'm going to be starting off with relatively wide brush and we're doing it in acrylic, so we've got to move quite quickly because uh, acrylic tends to dry nice and easily. This morning you'll see that we've got a very simple palette. We're only using the three primary colors with white and we'll throw in perhaps uh, a green base black or a burnt amber, which is a dark brown as we, as we go along. I'm going to try and keep the palette simple so that you can see it as it goes down and work within here. We've only got uh, 15 to 20 minutes to complete this as I think those should be the rules of an in-situ painting is you've got to try and keep it as nice and simple as possible. Now we're going to start with the sky which it's very easy to make a light color darker, very difficult to make a dark color lighter. So I've taken in some white and put it into the side and you'll notice that uh, I'm mixing color by putting some into the side of it so I know that there's a total graduation from the white through to the dark there and I'll see uh, definitely we're looking to create a little bit of this lighter color. We're going to start our horizon should always be about one third of the way up, there's one third of the way down. And so from there, I'm working on a board, what's called a masonite board. You can get it from any hardware store. Um, and they're quite robust to be able to use. What you can also try and achieve is getting your brush mark to go in a vertical way. That gives the impression that the sky is coming up over you. And the nice thing about acrylic is that you don't have to prime the board. It's a plastic-based, water-based paint. So it tends to seal the canvas and later on, seal the board, later on you can come over it then it's like priming it, uh, the triple prime duck weave canvas that you'd paint oil on top of you can there, and quick as that <coughs> excuse me, you've got what is the brown underneath is coming through gives it a bit of that dusty look and you'll find that it's actually quite exciting that there is the accidental involved with the, with the realistic now because we're going to be needing to have a little bit of that green we can come in straight with the yellow. I'm keeping it separate to the palette, going in with the blue, so we get a green, but it has to be a distant green. We would be using that very local green warmth in the foreground. So we've got to send it back a bit. I'm going to add a little bit of red to it so that it makes it into more of a brownie green. And let's see if I add white to that color. You'll notice I've also put it separate to where I've been mixing that paint so that you can see the total contrast between the two. And there we will start with that. And I'm going to scrub now horizontally scrubbing so that whilst that paint is still relatively wet I might be able to get a little bit of a blend going on there. That's what's really exciting about using oils rather than acrylic is that you get that opportunity to blend. With acrylic it's exciting in that it encourages you to really move quickly in identifying what you're going to be doing, simplifying it into three shapes. You'll see that we've got the sky, break it down to the middle ground there and then we've got the foreground this whole section here and so we're going to move quite quickly and identifying yes now I know how to mix that color it was red uh, yellow plus blue nice and dark we're going to add a little bit of red to that and so we've got our darker color I'm going to bring it a little bit lighter but we've got more of that paint now that we've investigated and we are going to just scrub vertically you can see there's that little bit of a forest I've got my little finger out which touches on the board so that I've got a little bit of control and dabbing. Ideally, you can also just freelance it there. I'm going to come around now. We want to be able to also create. I'm going straight in with this white and we're going to add a little bit of that orange now. Still same palette area. We're looking for that horizon underneath the forest where it's a ready orange. Again, I'm just trying to keep that palette simple and now pointing the brush has a flat surface on the top of it so there we've got where the, it needs to be lighter so add a bit of white to it and we create that lighter horizon there we can come back in and develop more more depth there that same color we want to continue throughout the whole canvas so I'm going to 
make more of it, it's that yellow, adding a little bit of the red, and we get to an orange. Here you see it's easy to make a light color darker, difficult to make a dark color lighter there. We're gonna now pull in a little bit of that blue, so we're getting that color and lighten it. Now there's so much of that paint there, I'm bringing in white, I'm gonna take it straight to the side so that you get an immediate variation. And then we're gonna go in with that up the top there, still needs to be a little bit more orange. Bring in the top there and we're gonna scrub that all the way down. So what we get is color composition. The entire thing then is hypothetically you suddenly have somebody walking into the studio and saying, oh, what have we got going on here? It's like playing an excellent golf game. The fewer strokes it takes to get to the destination, it's the same thing with painting. You want to try and simplify the entire process down to just the bare minimum. And so we've got lovely mark making, broad strokes, simplifying it in the background there. We do have those deliciously orange cliffs in that background area, which if we were to just do vertical strokes of that orange, we will be able to start pulling in red, yellow, and no blue, so we're trying to keep it straight orange, so that we have a, a reddish color. Now I'm going to take it across, using a little bit of artistic license there, so that we get it coming all the way across. And I'm going to lighten up certain areas of it, vertical side of the brush, I'm using the blade side of the brush now, so that we build into it with certain rock faces that are, are jumping out at us. We'll come back in and work with a little bit of that darker element of it. But again, you see I'm going a little bit darker there on the top of it so that we've got those cliffs standing out. Now you'll see that on the side of the cliffs, above and below, we've got some foliage, this sort of dark foliage. So I've got that orange. I'm going to take blue straight into it because orange is technically a green, I mean a yellow. So blue and yellow, you're going to get to your green. Now you'll see I've gone to a bit of a blue there, so I would still pull in more of the green. Now what's ended up happening is you'll find that we've got pastelized here, meaning there was white in the pigment originally. So you've lost control of those tints that exist there. So what we're going to do is we just take the cloth, we don't have time to clean the brush, we're going to dry it off and we start again with yellow and blue and you immediately get back to your very strong dark pigments without any pastelization. And we pull in the red because we want to get to that darker brownie green. And there we've got a lovely dark color now to be able to go on the top and define some of the edges of these cliffs that are dropping down. And maybe block off on the left hand side there. Come down, we've got some beautiful, as it drops down into forest territory there. And I'm making my marks come down there following a contour of sorts so that you get an idea of what the, the lie of the land might be and full face of the brush stippling now so I'm scrubbing left and right here where the brush is full on perpendicular to the face and you're going to use the lovely ability of that brush to be able to create perhaps a sense of foliage take that color up to the top and put them on the top there as well as we come down, we create that. Now if we look at that compared to what we've got in the background, we still need further darkness. So I'm gonna go back in looking for an even darker color. I've got a blue based purple, so it's a blue. Adding a little bit of yellow into that, we get towards a darker green. And so again, I want to be able to pull in, but it's got a blue base to it, so we're getting a lovely contrast. And maybe put something on the top there. We see the way that comes down and creates those channels. Again, the entire time I'm developing a beautiful sense of layering. It's not geometric, it's random, so that you do get nothing standing out. You just want it to be a, a holistic piece, which is why I really want to emphasize that you try and keep a simple palette. A simple palette is, is beautiful for achieving the task. Now I'm taking some white into that, and we've got to go onto there. Okay, so now we're marking that's 10 minutes in. So we've got uh, our basic fuzz over the top now. We're going to just fuzz over the top there. I'm pressing very lightly on the surface so that we get a, a sort of a distant, not over the whole thing, but just so that we get a sense of 
there's the steps going into the background. We'll come back and look at that in a little while to finish off things. But I don't want to come into the foreground now and we're going to get a big jump. What we're looking for is strong contrast. So I'm going to take more white again. I'm going to put it in the top here. And we've got our yellow available. I'm not washing my brush. I'm just taking the yellow. I'm putting it into where we pastelize quite nicely there. Taking a bucket of that white and putting it in there so that we get this lovely light. Thing. But if I add a little bit of yellow to that, we get it to bronze out a bit. Midwinter now in, in, in Southern Africa, here yeah, we get the grasses have dried out quite beautifully. And what we're doing is I'm just dragging it up to the left. You'll see that the flicking of the brush is just creating a lovely sense of that, that uh, bush grass blowing in the wind there. And we might get that, that path to come down to the left as it comes towards us there and then Again, I'm drawing with this colour. I know I'm going to be using it throughout the whole thing. But we then get it to flick up more and more in the foreground as it comes down over the path there and up again to the side. As it comes further out, that path comes down. And again, we've got it coming around the corner there. So, technically speaking, again, <coughs> that could be called an element of completion. But we want to be able to now continue to create more depth by pulling in some of this darker green again dusty green it's going to jump over the top of our, our hill in the background here that was to become the subject matter of this thing we've got i'm just stippling to create a middle tone green on the background there and maybe a smaller one on the right here you'll see by stippling you're allowing some of the colors from the background to come forward too so you get a lovely element of that. Now, we've got our middle. How do we lighten? We go with white. But you remember if we added white, it pastelizes and we want to be able to go with dark. So I'm pulling yellow and blue back together with a little bit of that red, knowing that I can make it lighter later to pastelize it, but I'm gonna really try and give it a good dose of dark here to be able to get that contrast in there. If you ask me, you're not going to be able to see enough of that contrast, which is why we'll come and give it a real dose of dark just now. We're going to add a little bit of black. Um, and so we've got that. I'm going to add white in here now. So we're looking to create that um, white aside. I think it's too pastely there. So now we're going to go on top of that and we are just going to create a lovely bit of flare on the top of that right hand side so you've got the light hand side of the, the tree as well as the dark there and again so you get the light and dark contrast they're jumping out at you um, it's not a totally foreign color we'll get some flicks off there just to give it a little bit of a, a random feel and maybe get some of this color also to come into the foreground here you get a lovely sense of it all being uh, completed to a certain degree. If I were to take this color up to the top here, you'll find that we might end up creating too much warmth there. And so you don't get that beautiful sense of depth. You'll notice immediately that we've lost our, our depth. And so with this color, the white and the blue going into that green, we soften it off and we just create a little bit more of that lighter color into the background there. Okay, so now we're going to be throwing in a little bit of this this black. So we take a little bit of the black onto the bottom here. Real dark color. Black in acrylic is usually green based. So you'll see I've added yellow to it and it's immediately gone to a, a dark green color. So I can get that strong contrast developing on the right hand side of this tree. And again on our right hand side of this tree here. And so we get a lovely thing. If I were to take that green now and go into this color here, I will then also be able to get some of my darker colors that I'm looking for up the top here. All right, into the side of that channel there, onto the top. So we get that, that sense of, of depth. Okay, and then coming further forward, we've run out of that yellow. We want to be able to bring some of this red. I haven't washed my brush, so I've still got that dirty orange. We're gonna come into the foreground here, cover over the board which will seal the painting. All right, we've got that, that brown road coming forward and we've got the strong depth in the creating that contrast, the push and pull of it. 
I always like creating a lot of contrast, so I'm going to throw a little bit of light into the top of this this here as well. It gets it to jump out some more, and we get that real there. Okay, so rounding it up there, I want to still be able to create our real smashing highlights. So let's bring out the last bit of that, that yellow to create some orange up the top there and orange into the road using you'll see is this lovely Dala acrylic it's very easy to use and I'm just using the last bit there about the same amount that you'd put on a hobbit's toothbrush so that you can just collect up that becoming nice and light there nice light orange you must make sure that it is an orange to be able to pick out the light on this road there now I'm going across and I'm bringing my brush strokes down so that it comes towards you and then out again again is it still jumping out not enough I'm going to go on top of that with white so that we get that road to really sort of jump out towards us now I think that the that background the, the main feature of this would be those cliffs so for the last 40 or so seconds we want to continue to try and really get that to jump out for us and fine side knife of the brush going in you'll notice today I've actually only used just this brush which is makes the whole thing so much more versatile getting used to the one some of your elements you find that you don't actually need to do much more there's people think it's mad but sometimes if you're wanting to create even more depth you'll take your, your yellow um, and get it to scrub that yellow, that orange. Why would we use that? It's going to be straight orange onto the back here. Straight orange to get that to be a real highlight. And we're moving forward, we'll find that. Hey, you know what? There we go. So we've got a very simple depiction, not more than 20 minutes. And we'll take this back to the studio and put in some highlights, even work on top of it with uh, oil and perhaps use a palette knife to finish things off um, but that's how you can do it nice and simple enjoy the rest enjoy your walk that's it enjoy your walk Dead, yeah Good for a birthday. And you lost some people. Done your painting. So that's awesome, man. Yeah. Happy that's birthday. Me. Oh, thank you. Say hello to everyone. That's fantastic. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Hi. There we go. That's fantastic. Thank you, Brian. There we go. Happy birthday. That's awesome. Thanks, man. If you want a birthday present, join us. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>